So I guess uh, players in MLS are still very uh, below of their potential. Uh, when I was cursing my master in, in sport administration at U Miami, uh, the first uh, impression that I had is that Americans are very addicted to the four big leagues, MLB, NHL, NBA, and NFL, and sometimes for, forget to, to look over other countries and world in the Welcome back to the Sporting Global Podcast. And today I'm here with Marcelo Cladino. And Marcelo, how uh, how are you? How's Happy New Year, first and foremost, too. And how is your uh, New Year celebration? Hi, Oli. Happy New Year for you, too. So it was some time to relax, to think about the year that was away, and to think about new, new projects and, and set new goals. Absolutely. Well, it's a pleasure having you part of the podcast. And I guess like it's, it's a good way for you to, to just, you know, kick things, kick the year off with like being part of the podcast. It's, it's like an easy transition, I guess, into like communicating, sharing some knowledge. And, uh, you know, we're excited to have you part of it. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And for those of you that are, you know, tuning in, watching here, you know, make sure if you haven't, you know, liked the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. If you want to see, you know, weekly tips from leaders like Marcelo, like every week, you know, they're sharing their tips, their insights, their story. So make sure to do that. And uh, Marcelo, I, I just want to kind of like start a little bit about, um, you know, dive right, right into it essentially. And I just wanted to know a little bit if you could share kind of like how, how did your journey in the sport industry begin? Just take us a little bit through how, how your, how your journey started. Okay. In fact, I'm a civil engineer and who entered in the financial market in 2000. Right. And I really love sport. It was a passion. It is a passion that I have been growing since I was a child. And in 2004, I had an, an interesting experience when I visited a, a client who was a soccer player in Brazil. Right. And he was he was bankrupt at that moment so i was shocked about for what, what i have witnessed witnessed and try to help him to rearrange things in his financial life uh, luckily he was sold to an european team uh, one month two months later right. and some money starts to come into <laughs> to come to, to the cash right and so i worked for with him for one year then we lost contact i was promoted to an executive uh, function in my company in a in an international american insurance company mm. and so that time i knew i already knew that i would do that to help players with their financial lives to help them to grow their assets and to manage well their wealth. Right. And, but the first opportunity only appeared in 2008 during a flight. Yeah. I met a Brazilian volleyball player in a flight. She sat at my side and we started to talk. <laughs> there was some coincidence there because I was reading a few Jackson's book sacred right. baskets and her fiance uh liked basketball very much was was a basketball player in yeah. fact so we start to to talk and i have a hobby since i am a child is to collect official jerseys uh worn jerseys yeah and or prepared jerseys for right. the games right. and in that situation, I thought, well, I, how I can get a, an official jersey from a volleyball team, the national volleyball team in Brazil. It's right. much more easier to, to get a, a soccer jersey, but a volleyball one would be very difficult. Yeah. So it was crazy because I, I remember about the jersey, but I didn't remember to, to network with her, to maybe ha having her 
as a client. Right. <laughs> That's right. a mistake that I committed, but the jersey helped me to 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 maintain the connection with her. Yeah. And 15, 15 days later, she called me and oh, I have your jersey in my hands. How can we, I can uh, meet you, whatever. And so uh, right. she asked me to, to go to Sao Paulo and we met and during the conversation, she was more interested about what was actually doing at that, di- at that time. Yeah. And in the end to, to resume, uh, she became my first client and I was very lucky to have her as a client because uh, she was already uh, a very famous volleyball player uh, around the world and was playing in Italy at that time. Right. Then she went to the Olympics and, and was Olympic champion in 2008 in Beijing. Yeah. And so uh, the connection was great. And then I started to work with her and was her best man in her wedding. So it's a very good, it's a nice story, and we have been working for 13 years. I mean, like, I just, I just before we move on as well to like what happened after that, I just want to talk a little bit about that, that uh, you know, story in itself because it's so important in terms of, um, you know, just just for all the young people, right, that are sitting here and just like listening, right, and thinking like, oh, how do how do I start? Like, how how do everything begin, right? And it just, you know these things happen, you know, but it's just about being proactive and you don't, you never know where that opportunity might, you know, be or come from. And it's just like, you know, always, you know, being in a sense on, on the, on the edge here, you know, and just, you know, taking, taking the opportunity when it is there. And as you were saying too, is that of course, maybe you forgot, you know, directly talking about your company right away, but you built maybe it's something more important than like a, a more of a personal link, you know, right away, which, which is like, like, as we talked about too, it's, it's like, you never know when those opportunities comes, comes up. Right. And, and it's, it's about grabbing that opportunity. And, and as you were saying too, it's like, it's not that you're, you were actively seeking for this to happen, but it like, just having a friendly conversation with the person that was sitting next to you on a flight or on a bus or, you know, wherever you are, you never know who's sitting right next to you and, and what that might lead to. And just treating people with respect, you know, with, with, with the decency and, and being a nice person, you know, it can come a really long way. And you, you see the, 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 the reward, I guess, in a sense of that now. And, and I think that's a very key lesson for people to, to keep in mind, you know, moving forward when they're like, how do I build my connections? How do I do this and that? Right. And it's just like, well, it's starts with being yeah. yourself and putting yourself out there. I guess there are a lot of opportunities in front of us every day when we are outside the office. I always tell, tell my team to to let the universe help them. Right. Because when, when you are uh, in other place, meeting new people, everything can happen. And yeah. this meeting changed my life forever. Right. Actually, uh, I didn't have a company before meeting her. The company right. was created in the moment I, I met her. Right. That's true. I didn't have I, 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 I didn't have a business card. <laughs> I didn't have the name of the company. So that's why what everything uh, began. Right. Everything happens for a reason, you know? <laughs> yeah. So well, yeah, just, just after just, after after this meeting I Okay, I start to to think strategically to how I could meet other players, how what what situations I would create to have more clients. But mm-hmm. this meeting was this first meeting was totally unexpected. Right. So let's let's talk a little bit about like what happened after that and sort of like with top soccer and top consulting and, and that sort of like you know journey. Um, just take a little bit, bit like kind of like where where we are today, and then we'll dive a little bit more into I guess the the, the, the purpose and, and how Top Soccer Brazil came to life. Yeah, uh, the core of our service are our tax, financial, and legal advice uh, for professional players and sport professionals. So uh, today we we provide those service for more than 100 Brazilian sport professionals and players around the world in 15 countries. So 
uh, as I said, I could I couldn't ever imagine that we we'll, someday we would have more than 100 clients. Right. Uh, so it's been a crazy but uh, very funny journey <laughs> until now. Well, I can't I can't imagine, and and I wanted to just um, obviously you know I think in a sense you 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 touch upon like you know how you know, the Top Soccer Brazil came to life, but like, I guess in a sense, Top Soccer is, is more related to the soccer players, right? But how, how, did yeah. it, how did it sort of like transition from, you know, that one volleyball uh, client that you had and like transition into like, okay, now I'm gonna, you know, be Top Soccer Brazil, like we're, we're, we're allocating sort of like our, 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 or branching out as sort of like to different kind of, not just the athletes, but like also specifically soccer players, like take a little bit through like how that, you know, these steps kind of like came, came to place. Yeah, first we start working with volleyball players. As I said, we yep. have been working with many Olympic medalists. Brazil has a strong volleyball uh, school, you know, it's, right. uh, three times Olympic champion, three times world champion in the male team and two times Olympic champion in the female national team. Mm -hmm. So in those first five years, we got a lot of experience and we could understand and uh, have the chance to understand how things go uh, and how uh, players, uh, which uh, needs every player has, uh, which fears, uh, which concerns, the mistakes that they always commit. And so after five years, we launched Top Soccer to provide the same service, but only for professional from soccer, mm -hmm. for professionals from, from soccer. And there's a, there's a little bit difference between athletes in other sports than soccer. Soccer is very particular. And we, we already know the, the, the money involved is very big, right. very huge. And there's a lot of demanding and just a little it's just a little difference between those those two kind of, of clients but in the but in the, in the end of the day in the end of the day uh, they we have to, to, to give attention attention to 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 try to understand what they really need and to be at their side every moment because uh, they change from one group to move from one club to another, from one country to another. So you have different tax regulations, you have money exchange. And so you have a lot of, and this comes quickly. They yeah. call you in a Sunday uh, midnight and tell, I'm going to China tomorrow. I will play for some club in China, or I'm going to Italy. So you have to, to prepare and set a bunch of documents and to, to give him more comfort in this transition. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. It makes makes total sense. So, so talking a little bit about like you know, like obviously you know, like providing these you know financial uh, education, you know, legal and tax advice for for soccer players, like specifically with Top Soccer Brazil. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about like what are, what are some of the you know I guess the typical challenges these these players are facing and. And how do you sort of like help them over overcome it? You know, because obviously, you know, as you were talking about at the beginning, like you, you, you saw like, you know, bankrupts, bankrupt players, you know, they were struggling financially. We're like, what are some of the typical challenges that you've been noticing uh, over, 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 over the years? Okay. Uh, the, we have a lot of different situations. Uh, my, my, my job is not the same yep. every day. Right. We have new things coming and our biggest concern is to make the player aware of of his personal projects uh, to envision what he wants for him for his or her life uh, to to prepare the, the assets for the future because uh, in a professional sport career we have a lot of uh, key points that can impact a player like an injury uh, that that can be uh, temporary or not. Right. Uh, you have to to always uh, claim the attention 
of the player about the market. Uh, it's one thing when you're in the first position of the standings mm -hmm. in a championship, and that's very different when you're trying not to be relegated to the right. other division. So it impacts his financial life. The role that he wants uh, or the influence he wants the family must have over his, his or her issues. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the relation with the manager, and the relation with the, with the club, and, and how he can adjust his, his spending life uh, to the future. What he wants to compromise now to, to gain later in the future for his 40, 50 years after he or she retires. Right. So it's a constant process of aware, awareness mm -hmm. that we can, that we work a lot of, of uh, you know, in every meeting, in every me meeting we have, in every uh, conference call, we, right. have, we have to, we have to, to remember that. Yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely. And, and I wanted to, because obviously, you know, since, since 2015, you guys have been, you know, provided services for, for soccer players, specifically in the MLS as well, you know, the major league soccer for those that, you know, are, are not aware of that. And, and I wanted to like, you know, uh, talk a little bit about that specifically, because obviously the American sport industry is quite commercial, you know, very also com compared to like, sort of like the European football. And I, I guess in a sense, S South American too, where it's very, you know, specifically and very focused on the commercial business side of the industry. So I was wondering like, has this sort of like mentality in a sense reflected on the knowledge of the player base that you guys are, you know, representing in the MLS or is there, is there any difference? I'm, I'm kind of like, think that's a curious uh, question for people to, to understand, like, is, is there any noticeable difference, you know? Okay. Uh, just, just to see if I understood your question is how, what's, what are the difference between the commercial uh, effect in MLS players in other other players in other areas. Was right. that correct? Okay, thank you. Uh, so I guess uh, players in MLS are still very uh, below of their potential. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was cursing my master in, in sport administration at U Miami, uh, the first uh, impression that I had is that. Americans are very addicted to the four big leagues, MLB, NHL, NBA, and NFL, and sometimes for, forget to, to look over other countries and world in the world of sports. Right. So they knew very much about MMA. They knew very, very few about uh, Formula One, for example, and, and other sports. Mm -hmm. volleyball for example right and i guess soccer still has its challenge this this kind of challenge in mls uh we see some uh local uh initiatives with players from not not only from brazil but from for from other countries to right. to market their their potential image and but i guess Soccer players in the United States don't make a lot of money mm. with marketing or merchandise, uh, and even with salaries. Uh, is the salaries in MLS are not in, in this moment? It's improving year after year after year, but uh, I guess they they need to attract attract more attention from the audience to 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 soccer in the United States, maybe in the next World Cup uh, in 2006, uh, 26, yep. maybe we have this opportunity again to, to make soccer explode in the United States, but we, we can't compare right now uh, the money that uh, soccer's uh, professionals in the US uh, are making right now comparing to to Europe or even Brazil, South America. So uh, I guess there's a lot to, to improve, a lot of, 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 of initiatives to, mm. to, to, to improve the, this potential. Uh, we have to, to improve the Mexican and Spano 
audience in, in US uh, and make soccer more uh, attractive uh, to American audience. Right. No, one one hundred percent on on that side. And and I wanted to um, look look a little bit back in terms of you know your journey with top soccer and and sort of like you know working with the with with the soccer players like you know across the globe, but also like transitioning into the U.S. market. Um, would you say and like I guess in a sense how has the expectations of the players changed over time in terms of um, you know financial education knowledge you know these these kind of inputs like how has that changed over time for you guys? Fortunately, we have uh, much more awareness right now. Players uh, know much more what they really want what they need to, to do, right. and technology, information, uh, sometimes a lot of information that doesn't help also. Right. But, right. Uh, we cannot compare a player from 2021 with a player from 2008 when I start to, to work with athletes. It's totally different. They are much, uh, much more informed. Much more aware about uh, what they they must do to to organize their, their future, right? And in, in the in the in spread the spread information we have right now helps to help us to to know and to be informed about the bad examples. Mm. So now we have much more uh, bad stories to be told. Athletes who who lost all their money and who are bankrupt or have issues with divorce and a lot of other relations uh, players usually have. So they are more, they have more attention from the media. They have to manage their social media and have to take a lot of care about that. So uh, it's very different, but, uh, no, but I mean, like, maybe... fortunately for the goods. Yeah, no, I was thinking as well, like, Obviously, you know, it's it's natural that you see kind of like a change over time, but I feel like also this this change of uh, the information and awareness also like is is sort of like a positive uh, aspect for you guys, you know, with, with, with top soccer because people are, are much more, you know, proactive in terms of, okay, like I need to like get my, you know, financial side in order, you know, to, to think about the future. People are much more aware about it and, and understanding as well, I guess, in a sense, the the time frame of, of length of being a professional, you know, player, it, it's not always, you know, you know, you can, you can be over tomorrow, you know, like you never know what's going to happen in practice or in game or suddenly you're, you know, you're, you're injured and you can't play anymore. So there, there's all these factors, I think, like, as you were talking about, it's, is that awareness and information and, and access to information as well. And, and I guess in a sense that that has provided some, uh, you know, positivity, for, for, for you guys as a company and, and helping, I guess, um, you know, understanding and providing those services for, for, for more players as, as you keep growing. Yeah, that's, that's right. Well, I mean, like that, 100%. That, that's, that's what Agreed. you want to, that, 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 I mean, like, I'm glad it's going that direction, you know, and I think we all are, you know, that the people are more aware, but it, it, it comes back again to like the industry being more professionalized and, you know, people are, are more aware of what's what's going on. And that's also why, you know, solutions like yourself and, and what you're doing is, is really important, right? Because there's still, you know, um, a lot of people that don't have, you know, that support network around them, you know, to to help them in, in that that essence. And and in a sense too, like their main job is is to play 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 soccer, right? And to to do their part on the field. And then, you know, you have good people around you um, that they can help uh, provide, you know, I guess that security over time, which is, which is critical. And, um, I wanted, wanted to talk a little bit about like last year, a little bit about, um, you know, some tips that you have for, for students that are, you know, trying to get their foot in the door, um, to, to work, you know, maybe get a career in soccer, you know, working closely with, with these kind of players, you know, perhaps in, in an essence with, uh, as top soccer, or perhaps just kind of like getting that better understanding of, like what are requirements and, and sort of like how can they help you know uh, the, the players essentially you know do the do the best possible job that they can. 
Yeah, uh, I think that I, I always say that in sports market, uh, especially, uh, it's more important who know you than who you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's very important to connect, uh, go outside, try to visit facilities, try to connect with sport managers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have now Sporting Global, we have LinkedIn, we have a lot of, of uh, uh, softwares and technology to, to get connected, social media. So social media also uh, provides to any, any one of us to create our own brand. So I always tell to my students at U, U Miami that you need to create your YouTube channel or your clubhouse uh, channel or whatever, or right. your Instagram uh, to, to, to start to promote your brand. Right. Okay, you don't make money in the beginning, Maybe yeah. you can, but it's not expected. But uh, you need to to get involved with the the atmosphere, the environment. To you must check what what they are talking in, in, about in sports market. What what are the trends in sports right now after the pandemic? In biosafety, for example, in arenas and stadiums, we attract a lot of professionals to take care of this right. uh, issue. Uh, we can think that two years ago, maybe we won't, uh, we didn't have that area to to work in uh, two years ago. Now we have biosafety, you have have esports, we have blockchain that can create a revolution in sports markets as well. So there there are a lot of new areas to to work in. And I guess the, the first rule for me is to get to know people, to meet everyone you, you, you can, and to do, uh, try to, to understand and to create your own brand and to dedicate more than others. Because uh, after graduation, people won't ask for your grades. They want to check your skills. So that's very important in my opinion. Right. No, but I think it's a really valid point. And it goes back to your story, right? In the beginning of just like, you know, having that friendly conversation with, with somebody sitting right next to you at the, at the plane or at the train or whatever. Right. And then who knows what that might lead to maybe your first client, maybe your first, you know, job, maybe, you know, who, who knows, right. What that might lead to. And I think it's, you know, as you were saying too, of, of building that brand and identity and, I also wanted to mention, I, I really appreciate that you mentioned us before LinkedIn, <laughs> which was super cool. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Um, you know, so it's it, it's good. You know, we're, we're building this, you know, mindset of like what people are going to think, right? So it's... It, it, imagine it, imagine if I had LinkedIn 13 years ago to connect with a lot of people. I had to, to travel by bus, by plane, <laughs> by car to, to many cities to meet people. And now you can do that. Right. From your house. Yeah, I mean, like it, it creates that much more, you know, flexibility and 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 access, you know, online to 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 start, uh, I guess, in a sense, being aware. But it, it it also comes down, right? As you were saying, it's like you have these solutions like ours, like like other platforms, right? That um, you know can help do it. But at the end of the day, like you have to, you know, be proactive. You have to, you know, share content. You have to be active. You have to, you know, take that step in order to make that happen. Because if not, you're just going to be one out of many that are just there, you know? So it, it, it's a very, it goes, I guess, in a sense, back to being, you know, proactive and taking that, I guess, in a sense, virtual bus or a virtual plane or whatever you want to call it. And then you still have to do that, you know, and it doesn't stop because if not, you're just going to be sitting on that bus or plane, you know, a lot of bus and plane analogy right now. But I, I think people are getting the point <laughs> of, of this. And, uh, and um, yeah, I mean, like, um, Marcelo, I, I don't know if you have, like, any, any final remarks before we wrap up. Well, I'd just like to thank for the opportunity, and I'm totally available, available to, to help to Spotting Global growing. And so you can count on me. 
awesome. Well, we really appreciate that, Marcelo, and it's it was a pleasure having you part of this as well. And for those of you that have been here all the way at the end, you know, if you haven't, you know, make sure to like the video. Um, if you haven't as well, just uh, sign up at sportingglobal.com. It's free. You can download the app as well on iOS and Android. So make sure to do that. Connect with Marcelo, with me. You know, a lot of great people are out there. There's a lot of great job opportunities as well. So make sure to check that out. And uh, Marcelo, like we have a little bit of a uh, tradition here at the Sporting Global podcast where uh, we're teaching everyone a little bit Norwegian. So I have to teach you a little bit Norwegian before we before we wrap up. And so um, with every video we do, we always finish with vi snakkes, which means see you later in Norwegian. So that's that's what you have to say. Okay, can you repeat please? <laughs> vi snakkes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it. I couldn't get what to say. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> It's uh, V Snakkes. V? Yeah. V not yes. There you go. Good job. You know it's Okay. I tried my <laughs> I tried my best. Hey, Sorry. You, did, you did great. You did great. It's Hope uh, to meet you soon in Norway, okay? Yeah, see you see you soon in Norway. Thank you. Thank you once again, Marcelo, for taking the time and we'll we'll talk very soon and then uh, have a great 2022. You know, we're excited about this year and it's gonna be great and we'll talk we'll talk very soon. I wish the same. Bye-bye.